Boom. We're here recording another podcast. Man, oh man, oh man. We're here. Um, I got a, it's a little nerve wracking today. I have a video set up. We're going to, I think we're going to go on YouTube. Because fuck it, why not, man? Got my essential oils. We're going to go um, on YouTube because it's quarantine and uh, we got to learn new skills. Got to learn new skills and take take shit to the next level. So, you know, even if it becomes popular, we're going to, even if it becomes, whether it becomes popular or not, whether it's successful or not, we're going to learn new skills. And honestly, I was just on a, on a Zoom call and I was talking about um, creating content and how I just like to do this. I just like to do this. This isn't about um, success. This isn't about like making something great. But the cool thing is, I'm a driven person. I want it to be great. I want it to be good. And it's it's definitely improved over the past couple um, months, especially during quarantine. I think it's improved quite a bit. I know my ability, uh, my speaking um, ability has improved. Hold on, sip some water now. Um... My speaking ability has improved uh, quite quite dramatically. It, it's a uh, it's a good exercise to just s- to speak in voice memos on a microphone, whatever. I would encourage you guys to encourage people to just start talking to yourself. Do stream of consciousness. See where your mind goes. Um, it's been interesting for me to actually these become therapeutic because I end up working out um, some ideas in my head. So, good times, good times. I got my notebook right here. Um, I've been really leaning on this notebook because um, I just got to write my thoughts down. It gives me, you know, podcast uh, podcast stuff to, uh, it gives me uh, content and gives me uh, material, you know. Um, and it forces me to be introspective and take a look at my life. And again, I encourage everybody to do that. Should I say all the time? So what have I been up to? Uh, I haven't recorded a podcast in a week because I was Debbie Downer about that sad life, gang, gang, sad life. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Um, I wasn't feeling good. wasn't feeling good. I could actually speak about what happened a little bit now. Um, like I've said before, I'm really exceptional 98% of the time, but there's that 2% where I really struggle and the mental health piece is... Uh, is definitely a piece, and I always talk about it not because I get depressed sometimes, but because I have a really hard time. Um, but the good news is I'm always a solution-based person. That's what I talk about. Uh, I find I find struggle, and I may be in that struggle for a period of time. Uh, there's a quote: uh, "You don't drown from falling in the water. You found you drown from submerging yourself in it." Um, and I don't submerge myself in the water anymore. I don't drown anymore. I may splash around. I may you know struggle. I may struggle to stay, uh, keep my head above water, but uh, I, I don't submerge myself. I swim to shore, you know, and I find myself uh, a solution-oriented person. So I struggled, had a difficult day last last Sunday. Um, you know, my partner and I, when she, when she and I are fucked up, it fucks me up, which actually feels pretty good to talk about, ma- talk to, to married people about that. Um, I have a client who's been married 41 years. And he was upset with, he was fighting with his partner, not fighting, but he was just having a hard time with his partner, his wife of 41 years, having a hard time with her last week. And he told me, he said, Eric, few things get me down, but when she and I are struggling, it wrecks, it wrecks him, you know, and it wrecks me too. It just wrecks me when she and I are having a hard time. Um, And, and something that I want to explore down the line um as i learn more about it because i only know a little bit about mine uh, but attachment styles um she is she has a she's not really avoidant but she has a more avoidant attachment style also i am a communicator obviously i do this i share meetings go to therapy you know write post that that i'm chatty fucking kathy bro Chatty fucking Kathy. So, so much of my life is wrapped around communication. 
Uh, so that's why I'm always talking about clear communication. Um, but with she and I, we have been together a number of years. We have children. Uh, there's just stuff. There's uh, that subconscious, that unspoken language I'm talking about. This is all practical for me. This is not theoretical. Um, but that unspoken language, she and I speak that unspoken language. You know, I don't do this chore or this task or I do this task and I don't finish it. And she is passive aggressive. I cannot stand passive aggression. Just tell me what the problem is. Just tell me what the fucking problem is. Say, hey, I'm mad at you because X, Y, and Z. So get the fuck out of my face. Give me 10 minutes. Do you know how much I would appreciate that? Do you know how much I would? And I think most people would appreciate that. Most people would be like, hey, they just told me they need it. Or even I need two hours. I'm going to go for a ride. I know you don't want to watch the kids, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you, watch them, so I go for a ride. What? Do you know how fuck? Do you know? Do you know how reasonable that is? It's reasonable, you know? Um, but that's just not who she is. It's not who she is. So, um, but anyway, back to attachment styles. I have um, a very anxious attachment to people. Um, I'm always scared I'm going to lose friends uh, because I've lost a lot of friends through, through death, through um, addiction. You know, my addiction pushed people away. Uh, there's lots of I, I was such a liability that people couldn't get close to me or stay close to me. Um, so, you know, I lost a lot of friends and um, my parent, my parents worked so much, which. I'm not bitching. I had both my parents, you know, but they worked a ton and everybody has their reaction to things. But I felt it, it made my attachment anxious for some reason. And then my girlfriend and I, I used to cheat. We're going to talk about sex addiction today. We're going to talk about sex addiction. Finally, we're going to talk about it. Um, but I cheated a ton. I cheated a ton and it put I, it made it difficult for her to love me. It makes, you know, cheating is hard to come back from. But you can come back from it. I don't care what anybody says. Some people say some people say you can't come back from cheating. But you can. You just both have to be willing to work on it. And most people... Then you realize you're not willing to work on it with that person. You know, she's not stupid. She just wants to work on it with me. I'm the person she wants to work on it with. If it was some other guy, she wouldn't want to work it. Maybe we have children. Maybe that's why she wants to work it out. But we're working it out. And it's very good. It's generally 98% of the time it's very good. That's why we stay. It's not like, uh, oh, we're miserable all the time. Oh, that sounds gross. Oh, sorry. Um, but it's not like we're miserable all the time. Um, we are happy so much. We're happy so much and so often. And, uh, man, it's difficult, though. Um, but I have an anxious attachment style, so I always feel like I'm losing people. So when, when fights happen, I get scared, man. I get scared, you know. So... That's what I was dealing with last week. I didn't. Rec I recorded two, but I was just bitching. I was just grumpy gills and bitching. I, I don't like when I don't feel good. I don't. And it, well, you don't want to talk on a fucking microphone when you don't feel good. You don't. You simply don't want to be chatty, motivational fucking guy. Um, so I didn't do it last week. We still put out content. We still put out four podcasts. So. Uh, uh. Oh, three podcasts. Um, we are, um, yeah, man, yeah, we're 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 churning them out. So let's talk about a few things. Let's talk about some projects we're working on. The story time project has been fire, straight fire. We have okay. So my boy said, "Are you gonna ever have some men on?" Here's why I've had two men, and I've had four women, and I have a woman. I have a woman coming this week and I have a woman going next week. Why is that? Because you always hear the story of the army ranger or the drug addict who's finally sober or the entrepreneur, the Gary V, the male business guy. You don't hear the story of the women from the bottom. You know, my boy said, I'm getting to tell the stories that Melissa, Alyssa Milano thinks she's telling for people. You know, social justice warrior women think you're speaking for these people. You know, this is you're going to hear a story from the person who you wish you could. You know what I mean? They're going to tell the story. 
and I think there's enough there's enough men represented, you know. And I you get to hear me and my story all day every day. There's enough men represented, so let's have some women represented. That's why I have so many women telling these stories. Um, and this is and this is not a feminist move. This is just, you know, it's I think you know I think it's valuable. And there's something there's something that's like super tight to me about when well i know what it is when women go through adversity men are pieces of shit sometimes so it's not like the world is just fucking them up men are fucking them up you know and that fucking that gets me sometimes i'm the toxic dude who's you know who's who have made women worse you know so now this is an opportunity for to give a bunch of dope ass women a platform to tell their story anonymously because in AA you get to share your story but you got people looking at your face and you know these people and you know you don't you don't want to tell them that you you know got in a random person's car in Mexico and almost got sex trafficked you don't want to tell anybody that hold on it's car going by but you know this doing it this way you have now you can um, you can share those stories anonymously it's just your voice and you're just talking to whoever one person me she they could just be talking to me or they could be talking to a million of you same same um so that's why i'm doing that uh story time podcast but this week i don't know if we have a story this week i had one today but we had to reschedule uh it's monday i turned 30 on friday let's go i'm gonna talk about that in a second too but we had one scheduled today um and we had to cancel and the other the big one the, i'm not saying any story is less valuable but the big one i'm doing i think we're gonna do an extended an extended podcast maybe a story time which is not particularly long but we're gonna do they're usually about 15 20 minutes but we're gonna do one 45 45 minutes maybe an hour and we're gonna send it but this is one this is a powerful woman <sighs> this is a powerful woman she's a good friend of mine um and her story is her story is legendary. Her story is legendary. So we're gonna we're gonna make that work. And we're gonna make that happen. Um, but that's why we're doing so many strong women. But we're gonna have men back on. I have a friend of mine right now um, who I can hope to get him on here. But um, we used together. I don't. You know what? We used together. But I lived. We lived together. He's, he's my best. One of my best friends. Talk to him every couple of days. I want to interview him. I don't know about him. I don't know about his life. And I'm curious. And he still has a hard time staying sober. And that's another thing I want to do here. I don't... You hear all these stories that are like, fucked up, fucked up, fucked up, happy ending. But what about the story that's fucked up, fucked up, fucked up, a little bit happy, fucked up, a little bit happy, ends fucked up? What about those stories? Because that's real too. That's actually... That story is more likely than my story. So let's hear that story. And let's see, that's the fucking value of what we're doing here. We're getting to tell stories of people who are normally forgotten. You know, all the, I say all those all those friends of mine who did not make it are still struggling, sick sick and suffering, alcoholics and drug addicts. Let's tell their stories. Let's represent, you know, let's tell their stories. Let's uh, be advocates for those people. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. If, I, if I'm going to do any of this stuff, I'm not going to talk about making money. There's enough, oh my God, every, I talk about this every podcast, the, all the manufactured, uh, motivation, the manufactured, the business coaches, the, you know, business coaching programs. Fuck man. There's enough. There's enough of you, but there's also enough fitness coaches. So look at me, but that's my job. It's my job. I love to do it. I've created, you know, I'm very creative within it. I love to do it. But um, this is honestly, if you ask me what I love to do, I love to podcast, man. I love to, you know, have conversations with people. I love to. Now we're doing video. This is a new, a new uh, path we're going down. I love, you know, just doing this shit is, is cool, man. So, if I can do this and get paid for it, fuck, you know, my dreams would come true. Hold on, let me sip some tea. Today it's oolong. No smooth move, no peppermint. Just straight oolong tea. So, um, 
yeah, that that. Um, so struggled last week, out of it. Back to back to recording podcast. I want to try to get another monologue in um, at the end of the week. Um, got a squadcast. I want to get another story in, but I have another story to post this week. Got a guy. It's a guy story. Um, but with the guy, and also with the guy stories, you're gonna have a limited. You're gonna have arrested. You're gonna have violence, and you're gonna have overdose. That's what you and drug dealing. That's what you're gonna have. You know, but I guess who and you know, I want to get some some other story, whatever, whatever. There's so many people though, so um, so yeah, we're gonna record another monologue at the end of the week. Going to post a story. Got a squadcast. What we're doing with the squadcast because I'm recording monologues. I want to encourage Jesse. It just oh, if you're listening all the time, I want to encourage Jesse and Benny to be creative in their own spaces. There's enough of me talking and you know what would be fucking tight. It would be tight to have a fucking podcast where you have me sharing my experience, my black experience, my black man and you know my whatever, my experience and then you have story time, you get to hear all these different people's experiences, men and women and people of all sexual orientations, you get to hear their experience and then Friday you get to hear Benny and Jesse's uh Jesse and Benny's experience. We we now made a podcast where we're we're represented. We're representing. We have Jesse and Benny who are Jewish and Mexican. We have me as an African American. We have multicultural, you know, multiple uh, sexual orientations uh, stories. Rep- we have stories represented. That's fucking tight. Let's go, doggy. We out here, son. We out here. That shit is tight. I give a fuck what you say. That shit is tight as fuck. It's very, it's very fucking cool. So that's what we got working there. So we got Storytime Podcast. Those are coming out really well. Um, as I get better, people, you know, it's just getting better. Uh, we got Squadcast. Jesse and Benny Squadcast went up Saturday. Jesse and Benny are going to be, uh, you know, trying to shine, let their light shine. I'm going to be listening on the podcast, you know, clicking in, saying fuck you to Benny. Uh, the clip I said about him being fat. That was very fucking funny. He showed it to his wife. My girl thought it was the meanest shit ever. She does. I'm not mean like that to her and my kids, obviously. But you know, with with, with your friends, oh my god, I'm gonna shit on my friends. And they and like I said, Benny shits on me, and I cut my wrist after. So what? We're even. Fuck you, bruh. We're even. We're fucking even. Um. So yeah. We're doing all these cool, you know, podcast things. Um, And right now, I want to dial in a schedule. That's what I'm trying to do right now as well. Um, I want to do, you know, Monday monologues. Monday monologues. Uh Uh-oh. Let me write that down. Let's write that down. So Monday monologues. Um, And then... Monday monologues and then Tuesday or Wednesday record a, Tuesday or Wednesday record a story, um, record that story. And I'm always going to do the stories remote so they don't have to see me. So they're always going to have like a grainy cell phone kind of sound. You know, we're going to clean it up a little bit. Shout out to Jai. He fucking hooks it up. He does. He's doing all our back end stuff. I do. So when he rec- when we record with him, he does all the audio engineering all the editing of the audio because sometimes i say crazy shit so he'll do all the editing um and then i upload and do all the back end stuff um shout out to him you know keep you know i've been every couple days i I bust some shit out with him so he's the fucking man um oh yeah so monday monologues tuesday or wednesday we want to either record and drop a story friday um friday the guys Thursday, another monologue for me. If not, we that's still Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We're fucking putting out content. Uh, now we got video, so these will go up on YouTube. The monologues will go up on YouTube. Um, when we get back to San Diego, we're live streaming the Squadcast with the guys. Uh, we'll sh- we're going to switch the schedule around back when we go to San Diego. The monologues will be at the end of the week. Squadcast will be in the beginning of the week. Um, Yeah, man, we're doing stuff. Okay, so now... Let's fucking snap our way in. I want to talk about something very important to me. So um, last week I was talking to Betty 
and uh, we talk. I talk about race a lot. I talk about race a lot, and the reason for that is my race has been questioned my entire life. My entire life, and even Benny, Benny said to me, said something about me being white, which biologically. I am, I am ethn- ethnically, I have white in me, but in the world, I am not a white person, man. I'm not. And I obviously, you know, but it made, uh, it made, I forced me, it forced me to ask him, it forced me to ask him what is blackness to him. I wanted to hear what he thought blackness was. So he told me what he thought it was. And, you know, he actually was very complimentary, you know, which I appreciate, but my blackness has nothing to do with what anybody else thinks of me, um, which it shouldn't bother me. It's just one of those sensitive things that people have always made fun of, dude. They have always made fun of it, and it's fu- that's a that's a tough one. Don't tell black kids they act white because they speak well, or because they're into American culture, not even not even white culture, just American culture. You know, it's not like I'm, you know, into Jewish culture. Or, you know, it's just fuck, man. Like, why is that even a thing? And that leads you to a few, that leads you, that leads down a few um, rabbit holes, down a few paths. So as soon as he said that, oh, sorry, that's a lot of trouble. Um, as soon as he said that, I started texting people. And I thought, you know, I got off the phone with him. And I thought, let me gather, you know, 10 or 15 people um, and get them on a microphone and ask them, ask black people, what is blackness to you? And the answers we've gotten so far, we've gotten one, two, we've gotten probably five answers so far. And the age ranges are from twenty early 20s to late 50s. And I'm going to ask, I think I'm going to hopefully get my grandmother to do it and my uncle to do it. And I have another, I have every, every, um, age, age group, um, represented and then every sexual orientation represented. So we are, and the answers so far are so profound. Um, and there no, there's no wrong answer, but an interesting thing about that, the fact that we, that I even have a project where I ask black people, what is blackness to you? The fact that we even have that as a project, because you don't, white people don't ask themselves, what is whiteness to me? And if they did, it would be racist as fuck. But white people don't have to ask themselves that. But just the, the, just the idea that I have to think about that, that is a privilege in itself. So you, when people talk about what is white privilege, white privilege, you don't have to think about your identity. And if you don't, if I don't think of it, you have to think of it. You think of it for me. That's a, that's privilege. And is it's and is it is it a weight to bury uh, a weight to carry to to think about that? It doesn't bother me to think about it, but just the idea that why the fuck do I got to think about that? Why do, why do I have to explain to my kid at five years old that he's different? Why do I have to why do I have to explain that to him? And we talk about racism has gotten better. Yeah, we're not getting lynched in the street, even though police brutality is fucking still crazy. I and you know how I know, and just because you don't see it on your news, I see it all the time on my news feed, on my social media. I see it all the time, and I see racial disparities all the time in the healthcare system, the mental health system, prison system. You see it everywhere. And in business, guess what? Every business networking group I go to, every business gathering I go to, if I'm not the only black person, if I'm not the only black person, there's maybe three others. That's a privilege. The privilege that the privilege that you go places and you're, you're surrounded by familiarity. But yeah, the idea that we, that you, uh, that people don't have to think about it. We have to think about it, you know. It's just weird. It's just a weird thing. But anyway, this project has been uh, very cool to see happen. And I didn't realize in taking on this project um, that the the depth and weight, you know, I did have someone say like, damn, it's a loaded question. Um, but I didn't realize the depth and weight of uh, the responsibility that I was taking on because 
you know, people are going to see this and they're going to be, you know, black people are going to be represented to some extent. I'm not speaking for all black people, but we're speaking for people a little bit. So there's a level of responsibility that comes there. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to answer that question though. Um, well, I think for me, I can say, I do want to, I do want to answer it. I'm thinking about it. Uh, what is blackness to me? Blackness is inherent, uh, uh, inherent pride. Blackness is, uh, fighting systems of oppression. Uh, blackness is talent. Blackness is, uh, being exceptional. Blackness is all the bad things and all the good things. Blackness is everything. You're allowed to be everything. You're allowed to be Obama and you're allowed to be two chains. Blackness is all those things in between. Blackness is everything. Blackness is undeniable. Blackness is uh, the undeniable influence in the world, not just this country, but in the world. Um, it's infinite. It's, it's everything. It's everything. Blackness is intellect. Blackness is, you know, hip hop. And, you know, it's everything. I'm not saying hip hop is an intellectual, but you can understand what I'm saying. Blackness is doctors and rappers. Blackness is everything. And it's ancient. You know, and it, like that's one thing that I've always, that I truly believe about blackness. And I, what I know, some of that's what I believe. It's we were kings. We, there was long long stretches of history where we ruled this world where we were the richest people to ever exist we were the most brilliant people to be on the planet we had the most innovation mathematics astronomy architecture we were the originals to do that that doesn't mean when people say the original man there's a, like this whole devaluing of white culture and like greek culture and asian culture because all those places had kingdoms and dynasties but what I say is black people, we did too. We did too. Um, I have a book at home called When We Ruled. It's a 700-page book of just ancient African kingdoms and African, uh, African uh, influence. And then African-American influence. African-American influence is just we've, we've built this place. We've built this place. And I do believe that we are threatening to power structures. I do believe we're threatening to power structures. I think that's what the fear is. I think that, I think the fear is that you can take my, you can take the, this from me. You can take this power from me. And I think there's an inherent like mush down. We don't want you guys to come up because you'll take. That's really, really what I think. And the thing we don't, you know, the most forgiving people I've ever met were black, are black people. My grandmother is 85 years old. She, she was, Voting Rights Act was 1965. She was well within her 20s when she got the right to vote, well, obviously. But she was, she was a, my mom, my mom was already born. My mom was six years old when her mother got the right to vote. You know, um, and my my grandmother, I've never heard her say a bad thing about a, a white person in my life. Never once in my entire life have I heard her say a bad thing about a white person. We're just the most, we're, we're forgiving people. Merciful, spiritual, intellectual, athletic, innovative, powerful, beautiful, brilliant. We're all that shit, baby. For real, dude. You know, shit is exciting. You know, it's exciting. But to be honest, I didn't love my blackness until I was in my early 20s when I got sober. You know, because, you know, I don't know why my reaction. Well, you know, that's, I think it's alcoholism. My reaction to um, distance and discomfort was to assimilate and to um, to fit in. It was to fit in. So I, I wanted to fit in with white culture. And I will say this on this fucking podcast, and I say this with my head down. I didn't want to be black. I didn't want to. I didn't want it pointed out. I talked to my friend a couple of weeks ago. Every third joke was a black joke, and guess what? They weren't joking about everybody. They were joking about me. 
They were joking to my face, and I so badly wanted to be a part of that I hung out with them anyway. You know, there's racial trauma. I don't give a fuck. There's cultural racial trauma. There's cultural trauma. There's generational trauma. And I have firmly experienced racial trauma. I've been chased out of neighborhoods. No niggers in Whitestone. Pork chops ain't for no niggers. I've heard. And this is two. This is 1999, 2000, 2005. I was called a nigger in Pacific Beach two years ago. Racial trauma. And I didn't love, I didn't love being black. I didn't begin to love being black until I got sober. And then I was like, fuck, this is dope. But there's depth and weight to it. Being black has, has connotations, you know, that we didn't sign up for, that we just have to take on, you know. Let that bitch breathe. Yeah, there's 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 a uh, weight and baggage, baggage to it. That baggage that we're proud to carry. I'm, we're proud to we're proud to carry it. And you know, um, I don't. We don't want special. I don't want. I'm not gonna speak for all black people. It's crazy. I don't want special fucking treatment. I don't want special. I just want to be. Just, hey, me and Benny said all the time. Just be regular. Just be regular. Don't go out of your. Don't go out of your way to be my friend. Just be my friend. Just either you like me or you don't. Don't go out of your way. Just be. Just be fucking regular. You know. So. Back to the point. That project. That project is fucking dope, man. That project is dope. And you know, this is what's cool about um, this podcast because I would love to say I could articulate that answer in two minutes and the fact that i'm giving people two minutes is challenging some people came prepared and they wrote something which is i appreciate you know one of my homegirls wrote something very well thought out and i appreciate that but yeah man it's tight it's a tight project to be a part of so we got monday monologues wednesday story time friday squadcast you know, creative projects coming. I got to figure out what we're doing visually. Got to figure out what we're doing visually. Because now that it's, now it's a fucking thing. I just was curious before. And that's another thing about this, you know, podcasting. I'm not podcasting to be entertaining. I'm podcasting because I'm curious. I'm doing all this shit because I'm curious. You know, that's probably one of the best adjectives anybody's described me as. It's just curious, man. Just interested in life. Just interested in life. Pondering life. You know, more will be revealed, you know. It is, a little, it is a little exhausting, though. Just thinking about everything. That's anxiety, though, and OCD. Just thinking, like, what did that person mean by that? What did my girl mean by that? What is she trying to say? Who? Maybe she's saying what she's saying. You know. But I can almost see, th- I could see through it. I can see through that on people, but maybe that's mental illness. Shout out to Grippy Socks. Shout out to Cornerstone. If you know, you know. Shout out to Michael's house. Was a patient, then got fired from working there. Gang, gang, boy. Shout out to um, all the, shout out to all the mentally, whatever, man. But, um, you know, it's, it is a little exhausting to be, you know, to be introspective about every little fucking thing and to wonder what people are thinking, what I'm thinking, if I'm, th- what I'm thinking is normal, if what I believe is normal, it's fucking, it's a lot. Um, but yeah, I used to think AA was a cult. <laughs> I'm looking through my notes. I'm looking through my notes, and uh, that's one thing that just stuck out to me. Um, but you know what? They say they say AA brainwashes people. You know what? I needed some fucking brainwashing, bro. I needed some brainwashing. I had I had no guide to living. I had no guide to living. Last podcast, oh, not podcast I put out, but last clip I put out, because I put out two last, I recorded two last week that I didn't keep. I talked about being embarrassed. 
you know, I'm a little, I was, that was the realest thing I ever put out. The realest thing I've ever put out for myself. Um, because man, I'm embarrassed sometimes, but it keeps me super motivated. My, you know, Benny asked me last week, he said, Eric, why do you feel the need to do so much? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for acknowledging that I try to do so much. Thank you. Thank you. I don't want to be the motherfucker that said does too little. But it's because I'm trying to make up for it. Is there something wrong with trying to make up for the mistakes you've made with productivity and with positive influence in the world? Is there anything wrong with that? And I'm not running for myself. I always talk about that shit. I'm not running from running for myself with work. I'm doing things that are valuable, I believe. I'm doing things that make an impact. I'm helping people tell stories, um, you know, telling stories for people of multiple different ethnicities, uh, cultural backgrounds, sexual orientations, like I said earlier. I'm doing this. I'm, I'm making a positive impact with depth and weight. And I'm hoping that doing those things will make make up for the mistakes. I don't, is that bad? Is that bad, really? I don't think that's bad, man. I don't think that's bad. You know, doing this on camera is weird. You just can't look at it. Just can't look at the camera. I like the idea. I'm just talking to the microphone. Adding a camera adds like someone's here. You know, there's a lot of and there's obviously anonymity with uh, just the microphone. You know. <sighs> anyway, I'm gonna wrap this bitch up. I'm not gonna try to fucking ramble on some shit. Um, but as I close, it's been six weeks of quarantine. This might be the seventh week, honestly. Um, I can't, I haven't been counting. It's been flying by. So for me, it's been flying by, but I've been busy family. Just, I was in San Diego this weekend. Oh, it was a fucking nightmare. I love, (gasps) I love being there with my family and my kids, but my son is a fucking stone cold savage. He's a stone cold savage and I want to be better, man. Um, but anyway, it's been six or seven weeks quarantine. They're saying, quote unquote, they're opening things back up in, in may 13th but i don't see i don't see a way they're going to open everything oh back to normal i don't see that i don't see people gathering in large groups for a while um but we're getting back to normal and lastly lastly really quick um the the opportunity for productivity uh in your business if you're a business owner um you don't have to push all your content you don't have to push programs right now you don't have to push sales right now unless I don't have a brick and mortar building you know I have um, I can afford my bills right now Uh, I'm fortunate I don't have a brick and mortar establishment Uh, but we can prepare for six eight months from now that's what we can do you can prepare for three months from now when things go back to normal you can prepare prepare a project to roll out right when we get going there's a lot to do there's a lot of work to do so uh, if you're struggling with productivity and you don't have to do it every day, you don't have to say, I'm going to do this for a whole 20, you know, eight hours. Don't do it. Sprinkle 30 minutes in. You got time. We ain't going anywhere. So, you know, what I do, what I did was I wrote an outline. I wrote an outline of things I want to work on um, before quarantine ends. I have some articles to write. I'm going to do that tomorrow. F- fucking completely forgot about that. Um, got some articles to write. Got, I got these projects, work on these projects. And then they're ready and prepared for when the world comes back to normal. So. You know, you can organize and be productive, but don't put pressure on yourself to be crazy and blah, blah, blah. But I'm going to hop up out of here. This is a good time. I enjoy it. If you're listening, thank you so much. Um, If you're struggling, keep going. You're going to be okay. Uh, If you're winning, keep winning, son. Uh, That's it. We out.